back, thanks for staying with us. Days before the government effectively becomes illegal, the opposition, People's Progressive Party, PPP, has written several international bodies asking that they do not recognize the coalition administration after March 21. This was revealed by opposition leader Barry Jagdiel during his weekly press conference on Thursday where he revealed that the party will be meeting at meeting with the diplomatic community here on the issue as well. Vanu Manichan tells us more. We have written, Gail Tishere has written on my behalf to the Commonwealth, to the Organization of American State and to CARICOM. And in all three cases we are requesting that these agencies not recognize the government of Guyana after March 21st. There are other issues we raised in the letter. We gave them a detailed briefing as to how the government has deliberately been slowing down the process of complying with the Constitution, how they've acted in bad faith throughout even the engagements we've had and we brought the international organizations up to speed on those things. According to the opposition leader, these international bodies have acknowledged the receipt of the letters, but did not indicate their position of the treatment of the Guyana government post-March 21. Nevertheless, Jagdio said they will be following up with these organizations, as well as continuing to engage the diplomatic community here. I had called the Secretary General of the um, of CARICOM and I plan to call the others later. I spoke already to the Secretary General. Uh, well, they, I have several meetings over the course of the next few days. So tomorrow I'm meeting with some members of the diplomatic community again. In addition, the opposition leader also disclosed that last week he received another call from former U.S. President Jimmy Carter and updated him on the situation in Guyana. And I did not mention it last week that we had a conversation because President Carter said to me, he was trying to get on to President Granger. And I did not want to, you know, just soon as I receive a call to go in the media and say, oh, I just talked to President Carter. So give him enough time for that. I, I thought it's ne necessary for Guyanese to know that I received a call and I spoke with him. I, I prefer to keep a little quiet on the content at this point in time until um, I, I hear back from him as to whether he has... As, spoken to President as the PPP opposition ramps up its engagement with the diplomatic community, already several foreign missions here have come down on the David Granger-led administration for not upholding the Constitution following the December 21 passage of the No Confidence Motion. In fact, earlier this week, British High Commissioner Greg Quinn, in an exclusive interview with this newscast, reminded that the clock is ticking on the constitutional three-month deadline for holding elections. Moreover, representatives from the European Union and the United Nations have also echoed similar calls for the Guyana government to adhere to the constitution. Reporting for Earth Evening News, Vanu Manikchand. On Friday, we reported that Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan dismissed private criminal charges filed against Chairman of the Guyana Elections Commission, GCOM, Justice James Patterson, and the three government commissioners. Kizzy Coleman was there and filed this report. Justice James Patterson and Commissioners Vincent Alexander, Desmond Trotman, and Charles Gobin made their court appearances this morning at the Georgetown Magistrates Court. Private criminal charges were filed against them for breaching the Constitution of Guyana by not adhering to Article 106, which stipulates that elections are to be held within three months of the passage of a no-confidence motion. They were represented by attorney at law Rex McKay, Neil Boston, Robert Corbin, and Darren Wade. However, the Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan in her ruling said that the charge has no purpose and appears to be frivolous. She further stated that bringing such a charge against the defendants is an abuse of court. The charge were brought by Marcel Gaskin, the brother of Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin. Marcel Gaskin was represented by attorney at laws Shanjeev Datadin and Ganesh Hira. 
Following the ruling, Data then stated that the matter would be appealed at the High Court and then further, if necessary. The magistrate today was of the view that uh, she should dismiss the charges. There are other processes that exist, there are appeals, there are further actions that we could take moving on towards the High Court. There's no need to uh, refile. It's been filed today, it's been dealt with today. So, no, we don't intend to file them, we intend to move forward. According to the attorney who acted as a special prosecutor in the case, contrary to what the magistrate ruled, at common law, a statute cannot be breached as well as the constitution. As such, the offense is a very simple one. The offense that we have is a very simple offense. At common law, you can't breach a statute and you can't breach the constitution. You have, but if people get together and say that that's what they're doing, then it is an offense. It is a criminal offense at common law, and under Section 21, it carries a penalty of one year imprisonment. Well, it's not mandatory imprisonment, so they are the usual things that apply. But in what, when the no confidence motion was passed by the National Assembly on the 21st of December, it was. It meant 90 days later, they should have had an election, and there should be an election. Now, I think everyone in Guyana is aware that that is not happening. The people who are charged with bringing an election is the Elections Commission. And they are not taking any steps to do what they should be doing. As the matter was being heard in the Georgetown Magistrates' Courts, several protesters stood outside of the court calling for the coalition government to respect the Constitution. This is about Guyanese, not PPP. I have no confidence in the government that is existing now. Comrade Granger, I have a lady, Elizabeth Nelson, and her husband, okay? Mr. Nelson, they broke down my concrete house. The officer gave, they said the officer gave them permission, crushed down a concrete house to the ground with two little children in it. We seek all over for help. No one listened to us. As a citizen, I'm out here today for the Constitution, and I think our leaders should respect our Constitution of Guyana. Reporting for the Evening News, Kizzy Coleman. And finally, we're reporting on Saturday that with less than a week remaining before the constitutional 90-day deadline expires and puts Guyana in uncharted waters, the parliamentary opposition has called out the government for its duplicious statements regarding the Guyana Elections Commission, GCOM, and the no-confidence motion. Gerald Bryan has the details. In an address to the nation on Friday, President David Granger had cited the Guyana Elections Commission for his delay in naming an elections date. But the parliamentary opposition, in a statement soon after the president's comments, rebuffed several points that were made. For one, the opposition stated that the president actually rejected a work plan put forward by one of the PPP commissioners on GCOM. This work plan proposed holding elections by April the 30th when the voters' list will expire. In addition, the opposition criticized what it called GCOM's lack of independence, the lack of respect for the judiciary, as well as lack of good faith shown by the government. According to the opposition, government has been showing duplicity when it comes to preparations for elections. Meanwhile, the head of state said in his address that GCOM has not provided adequate information about its readiness for holding elections. I consulted with the full membership of the Elections Commission on the 8th of March 2019 to determine its needs and its readiness to conduct credible elections in the shortest possible time. It would be reckless of me to announce a date for elections without being satisfied that the Commission would be in a position to guarantee credible elections. I did not receive at that meeting the guidance that would have allowed me to proclaim a date for elections. I will be unable to do so until the Commission advises me. I expect that with the advice of the Commission and with the support of the opposition in the National Assembly, I shall be able to proclaim a date as early as possible for the conduct of general and regional elections. Granger also denied that the government is deliberately trying to drag out its time in office through the use of courts. The legal challenges, insofar as the government is concerned, were neither frivolous nor calculated to frustrate the implications of the no-confidence vote. The Speaker of the National Assembly was asked to review his decision in light of the legal issues which arose as to the validity of the vote. 
He declined to reverse his decision. He recommended in a statement, and I quote, full, final, and complete settlement of these issues by a court of competent jurisdiction replace beyond doubt any question which may exist and serve to give guidance to the Speaker, to the National Assembly for the future. End of quote. The President also reiterated that he will seek the approval of the National Assembly to ensure an agreement can be reached. In another statement on Saturday responding to the opposition, government reiterated many of its earlier points. It also claimed that the President has not rejected the April work plan, but rather has asked that it be submitted to GCOM instead. However, during an emergency meeting at GCOM on Thursday, the opposition commissioners walked out. They claimed that the government-nominated commissioners sidelined the motion on this proposal to discuss other matters. Gerald Bryan, The Evening News. And that's a wrap on this week's Week in Review. Do join us again on Monday at 19 hours for the evening news. From all of us here at TVG Studios, thanks for watching. Do have a safe and productive week ahead. Goodbye for now.